Hey guys, Greg Street here from the uh, Legal Legends Design team. The topic I want to talk about today is champions, and specifically, what do we think a good champion looks like? You might be surprised it's not just play rate or win rate. There's a lot more stuff that goes into it. There are a whole lot of factors that we use to evaluate whether a champion is successful or not, but there are five pillars that we treat as the most important. These are satisfying to play, a resonant theme, being able to express your skill on the champion, fair to play against, and then the champion also has to be unique. So I'll go into a little bit more detail on what these five mean. So satisfying to play is, is one of the more nuanced factors here. To players, it just feels good when you hit the button. And as designers, we think about things like, you know, what's the cooldown of this ability? What, how much wind-up does the animation need before the ability goes off? That kind of just feels good when you, you know, when you hit the button and see the reaction in the game. But it also has to do with the, um, do the visuals and the audio kind of match your expectations? If the ability is supposed to be like a machine gun, does it like fire you know, really kind of rapidly and, and maybe a little erratically? An example we use a lot is Jinx's Zap. It's a pretty simple ability, but the visuals kind of match your expectations. When you pull it off right, you see damage. It's pretty fast and responsive. We talk about the resonant theme for a champion. This is like, what is their story? Who are they as a, you know, a person or a non-person, as the case may be? Um, what is their character and how does their gameplay match that? We've recently started thinking about champions in terms of um, broad play versus deep play. So a broad champion is one that is, you know, lots of players play this champion. Ash is a great example. Um, lots and lots of players play these champions with some frequency. So a different access from broad is, is depth. And we're okay with having champions that are not, you know, not super high play rate, and maybe a lot of players haven't played them, but those players that do play them really, really love that champion. Another good example here is Ivern. We knew Ivern was gonna be a weird champion. He plays very differently, his personality is kind of goofy. He doesn't jungle in a conventional way, and that's fine. We suspected that there would be players out there that love Ivern and really enjoy just playing the jungle in a totally different way. Skill expression, in, in terms of gameplay, may be the most important pillar. It's not the only one, but League of Legends is a game about skill. And you know, a lot of what we're going for is that we know that getting better at something is very satisfying. It kind of keeps you coming back for more. There are a lot of different ways to express skill. Kind of the classic is, is the skill shot, right? Instead of just targeting a champion and hitting a button and doing damage, you have to line it up and aim, which means you need to predict your enemy's you know, movements or anticipate them or somewhere, sometimes even kind of lead them into a trap where you can hit them with the skill shot. Ideally, we like champions that have some mix of both good decision making and game knowledge with the actual, you know, how dexterous am I at clicking around on the map with my mouse? And you consider someone like Zed, there's a lot of lining up the shots, dealing with the angles of, of yourself in the shadow, and a lot of the timing around when you want to use the different abilities. A counterexample is someone like um, Xin Zhao, who has these abilities that you generally use as a combo together, the W and Q, but pretty much you always use them together. There's not a lot of decision making of should I use these, you know, these abilities together. So we could do all this work on making a good champion and still kind of mess them up if they're not fair. And really, you know, here's where we're talking about the game balance. And usually in relation to is it fair for the other player, or the other team to deal with your champion? Um, we accomplish this the best when champions have really clear strengths and weaknesses. Range champions like Ziggs are very effective at range, but kind of, you know, kind of squishy if you can get up close to them. Whereas a juggernaut like Darius is the opposite. He's very, very kiteable, but if he catches you, if he corners you somewhere, there's gonna be a lot of hurt coming your way. So the promise of League of Legends is a lot of champions. We have over 130 now, and so we really think it's incumbent that each new champion we add, and even every old champion that we update, is somehow unique. We have a lot of ninjas in League of Legends. We have a lot of dudes with swords. And that's not to say we won't add more, but they have to bring something new. We do spend a lot of effort to make sure that new champions and updated champions really belong to League. They need to fit within Runeterra. They need to make sense in, you know, inside the game world. Some of the older champions we've made, I'll give an example, Pantheon I pick on a lot because he's kind of a generic Spartan guy. That's not to say there's not room for that in League of Legends, and more recently, we've tried to integrate him a little bit more with the Targon lore. And when we do update him, I'm sure he will keep his, you know, his basis as a shield and spear fighter. We just like to plan him a little more within League of Legends, something that makes sense when he's fighting alongside, say, 
you know, Diana, Leona, Relly, and Soul, and other Targon champions. So it might feel like um, uniqueness is all about the, you know, the backstory of the champion, but the art plays a really big role in here as well. When you think about all these champions, you need to identify them, you know, very quickly on site, just by their, you know, often their silhouette. And this could be a challenge with the number of champions, the number of skins we produce. So I gave a few examples as we talked about these, um, these five pillars, but now I wanna go into a little more, you know, drill down a little more detail on certain champions to kind of look at how do they, you know, how do they stack up in terms of satisfying gameplay, fairness, uniqueness, and so on. First I wanna talk about is Nunu. Nunu is a kid with a Yeti. In terms of satisfying gameplay, I don't think Nunu scores very well here. The abilities themselves feel old. So when I was talking about like, you know, you pushing the button and seeing a cool animation or seeing unique visual, there's not a, a ton of that there. He probably gets the closest with his ult, which is a pretty big effect and can really turn the course of a game. So again, I'm not announcing a new new update here, but if I was working on it personally, I'd probably try to find a way to preserve the ult while maybe trying to add satisfaction to um, his other, other abilities. I think Kled is an example where we delivered a little more on what it means to be mounted. Um, with Nunu, you sometimes aren't sure are you playing the Yeti or playing the kid. And I'm sure there's a lot of league players out there who think, oh yeah, the, the Yeti is Nunu. In the example of Kled, though, he does dismount. Kled and Skarl, his, his, his mount, have very different personalities and even a little different gameplay. And when they kind of Voltron together, they're you know, more powerful than they are, they are separate. Which is not to say that's the specific take we need to do on Nunu, but I think it would be cooler to deliver a little bit more on, no, this is really two characters together playing as one. So second case study I want to walk through is Aatrox. This is a champion players are always asking us, when are you going to update Aatrox? And for good reason. Thematically, he really resonates with players. Like, he's a dark, interesting character. He does crazy things. The, the Darken story is, is really fascinating. When we first created Aatrox, he was, you know, acquired at really, really high rates. Since then, it has fallen off dramatically because he just doesn't deliver on that initial promise. Most of his abilities are not that interesting. So I'd say he gets low marks in terms of, of satisfaction and uniqueness. And again, fairness is probably something that you know, we could tune either way, but certainly the, if he has higher highs and lower lows, that'll give us more, more knobs and feel like he has more counterplay for the other team. We have made a couple of attempts at Aatrox, light updates to try to add a little more um, skill expression to his abilities, but I would say overall, Miss the mark a little bit. We're nowhere near there, and he really needs, uh, you know, kind of a full update. Um, and at least in terms of his mechanics, his visuals aren't aren't that bad. He's not that old as a champion. We just don't think he delivers on evil, you know, blade wielding demonic creature that kind of terrorizes the rift. Thresh is one of our most popular champions, and when you look in terms of support, he's always way up at the top. Um, and I think that has a lot to do with him delivering really well on a lot of these different pillars. So let's talk about satisfying gameplay. I mean, he has a hook, he has flay, which is a huge skill curve and like getting that ability to work correctly. He has the, the box. A lot of these are, he is fairly hard to learn and, and very hard to master. Thematic resonance, he does really well, um, you know, in my opinion. He's kind of Runeterra's version of the, of the Grim Reaper. He, you know, he sucks souls into his lantern. Um, we've done some neat things with him in terms of the, you know, the Dark Star version of Thresh more recently. In terms of fairness for Thresh, you know, if I had to, had to throw stones at him, this is probably where I'd do it. He does a lot. He has a lot of strengths and he kind of has an answer for every situation. So it's hard, you know, counterplay is sometimes a challenge with him. You don't always know as an enemy, how, what am I supposed to do to stop him? He can kind of, you know, do anything. Um, not to say that he's, you know, radic his win rates are radically out of control or anything like that, but just to be fair, I think while he delivers well on, on satisfying gameplay and skill expression and thematic, um, fairness is probably red ding him a bit. So final case study, I'm gonna talk about Morgana a little bit. She's an older champion, but still delivers, uh, you know, on, on some of these pillars really well. In terms of skill expression, Morgana still has some big decisions about how she wants to use her abilities. Uh, spells like Dark Binding could really make or break a team fight, but you could also, you know, could also deploy them wrong and not get anything out of it. I think she's a good example of how you can deliver on a champion where you're making interesting decisions as a player without it getting into like, you know, super complicated mechanical execution. Uh, thematically, she's kind of a mixed bag. Um, 
I think she has a cool personality, the, the fallen angel thing, but I think there's also a little bit of a missed opportunity to kind of make her our own. She feels kind of like the type of character you see in a lot of video games. And I don't know that you'd necessarily look at her and be like, oh yeah, she's from League of Legends. So in closing, I talked a little bit about our philosophy today with these, you know, these five pillars, but our philosophy changes over time. It is certainly not static. And the needs of League of Legends today are very different than what they were even a couple of years ago. We always try, as we're looking at like, what are the champions coming down the pipe that we're, you know, we're working on for the future? What problems are we trying to solve? What experiences are we trying to offer players that hopefully you guys haven't seen before? In 2016, we did several more niche champions with um, you know, kind of unusual gameplay, or, or maybe the, the character themselves felt a little out in the frontiers of, of our world. And so far in 2017, we've done some pretty broad champions like Zion Rakan that have showed up in a whole lot of games. And I think Kane is kind of kind of be there as well. But towards the end of the year, you're going to see a mix of some some broad appeal and some very you know unique champions with kind of gameplay you've never seen before that we know aren't necessarily going to be appealing to everyone. But we, you know we want some players out there to be like, yes, this is my new main. So hopefully this is the beginning of a conversation. Um, we'd love to get your thoughts on what of this resonates with you. Do you think there are pillars that we aren't taking seriously enough or pillars that we claim are important but we aren't actually delivering on? Um, please let us know, you know what your thoughts are on some of the champions I talked about, where opportunities are to add uniqueness that you haven't seen in League of Legends before. Um, and overall, just uh, really appreciate you taking the time to watch. Thanks a lot.